In Toybull's Dragon Ball AF, I missed a huge segment. Huge. Broly. Broly is a big part of Toybull's Dragon Ball AF series. This Broly is the insane Broly. It is the devil from movie 10, 8, and 11. And the reason I just kind of skipped over it was because Broly doesn't really play that much of a factor in Toybull's Dragon Ball AF because, again, the whole thing just gets cut short. But I do think it's a pretty accurate representation of what would happen if Broly got brought back during this era. So this is how it goes down. When Zykor is trapped in the Z-Sword, Gohan and everyone notice cracks. Zykor isn't going to stay trapped for very long, so they have to make a plan to either bring back Goku or find a way to kill Zykor once he escapes. And so they try both. However, a very crucial piece of information in this story is that since the Dragon Balls aren't working, the only way to get them activated again is to have seven Super Saiyans hold each Dragon Ball individually and put their power back into the stone, and that will give energy into the Dragon Balls, allowing Goku to come back down to Earth. But the problem is, there's only six Saiyans, Gohan, Trunks, Vegeta, Goten, Pan, and Bulla. That's six. So because they can't just wish back Goku, they go to Namek and bring back the only other Super Saiyan they know. Broly. Once Broly is revived, the first person he sees is Vegeta, and he's confused. He asks if this is the world of the living, and the only things that he can remember are the last few seconds of his life when Goku and all of his sons killed him. This makes Broly from the start go insane. He automatically transforms into the legendary Super Saiyan, but at this point in the series, the guys have had time to develop, and Broly isn't as much of a threat as he used to be. So they take him in, and we see him being held in Capsule Corp. He is essentially their prisoner. Now, what's interesting is that Goku's not around, and with Broly there, that's probably a good thing. However, they're trying to work with Broly, and even though he hates Goku, so did Piccolo, so did Vegeta. Goku has this ability to work with anyone. He's not confined by holding grudges. He is so far beyond that. And in turn, that brings out the good in all the people he fights alongside. But this time, he's not there. So it's going to be up to Vegeta to do the convincing. Eventually, Broly's anger builds up to the point where he breaks out and almost kills Bulma. But Vegeta stops him just in time. He grabs Broly by the fist and says, if you want to kill me, you can't. The way you are now, you can't kill me or even Trunks. And he lets him go. He looks at Vegeta for a second and thinks about trying to kill him, but Vegeta's words are too true. Instead, he just runs away. No one has told Broly why he was revived, so he's running around the Earth so confused. He's getting flashbacks of Goku dipping in and out of his insanity when suddenly, Pycon appears. Pycon has been training with Goku in the Dragon World for the past few years, and because he wasn't absorbed by Shenron himself, he can go between worlds at will. So he tells Broly the plan to revive Goku, and once Broly hears that Goku is no longer in this world, he becomes happy, and instead of focusing on Goku, he says that Vegeta is his next target. Pycon says, sure, but you've got to go through me first. So Broly charges Pycon, and instead of trying to beat him down, Pycon is trying to talk to him as they fight. He asks, why do you hate your fellow Saiyans? Is it just the hatred for Goku or jealousy of Vegeta? Pycon is trying to find the source of Broly's anger so he can get it and squash it. Broly then flashes back to a moment he remembers with his father. He overheard Paragus saying that Broly is nothing but a pawn. His father was only using him so that one day he could become king of the Saiyans. And I think deep down, Broly's hatred for the Saiyans is coming from his dad. When you think about it, his dad is the person he spent the most time with, and he is a Saiyan. That's why he killed him. From day one, Broly has been controlled, never having his own free will. As his battle with Pycon goes on, he is changing. Pycon is so much stronger than Broly. In a way, that makes Broly respect him. It cuts to after their fight, a shot of Broly lying on his back, completely exhausted. Pycon beat the insanity out of him. He's so much more mellow after the fight, and he asks, is Goku even stronger than you? And Pycon says yes, by a lot. Ever since that day, Broly has been by himself, training on Earth, alone under the watch of Pycon. He hasn't touched a soul. He's just there meditating under a waterfall. And that is the story of Broly in Toybull's Dragon Ball After the Future. With no Goku, it was Pycon who got inside the mind of Broly, and not just that, he beat the insanity out of him. After their fight, Broly never lost control again. 
and we even see him meditating, which for Broly is huge. It never happens. You would never expect to see him do that. Knowing that everyone is so much stronger than him at this point, the only thing left for him to do is train. 